Welcome back to the McMahon Group, everyone. I'm Lisa Schneider Cipriano. Well, if you didn't know it, February is Heart Health Month. And do you see this little red pin right here? This is my Go Red for Women, and it's a pin that hopefully you will see a lot more um, of people wearing them out there because on Friday is a Go Red for Women campaign to raise awareness among women and educate them that heart disease is their greatest heart threat. So did you know that heart disease kills more women over the age of 65 than all cancers combined? I did not know that. So to find out more about heart disease and what we can do to prevent it is Dr. Jeffrey Greenberg, who is the cardiologist with Cardiovascular Consultants in Phoenix. Good morning, doctor. Hi. As well as Tricia Leach, who is a heart survivor. Thank you for joining us this morning. Okay, heart disease. What causes heart disease? There's a lot of different causes. Um, heart disease, the main things are it's very preventable, it's very treatable. There's a lot of risk factors for developing cardiovascular disease. And a good way of thinking about it, it's a disease of all the arteries. I always tell my patients, it's not in isolation, it's not just the heart. It can involve the arteries to the neck, to the brain, to the legs. It affects all arteries equally. And the typical risk factors people have are diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, obesity, which is an epidemic in our society these days, which leads a lot to the diabetes and insulin resistance, and plain old inactivity. People not exercising, not being active, sitting around and uh, watching TV and eating all day. Yes. <laughs> which, so what's wrong with that, right? <laughs> um, and when you're saying heart disease, you're talking about strokes heart attacks, PIAs? Peripheral arterial disease, yes. It's a disease of all the arteries, the okay. legs, the heart, the brain. Pulmonary embolism, the affects, blood clots. It affects everything, yes. I know, Tricia, you are a heart survivor. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm 32. You're 32 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, that was another statistic I was reading is that a third, um, for women that are between the ages of 25 to 44, mm -hmm. this is the third le leading cause of death is heart disease. Yes. So tell us your story. What happened to you? Well, about six years ago, I went in to go see a new doctor, and she said, well, I want to do a baseline of tests on you so that I just know where we should start, okay? And uh, then she decided to do an EKG, and we got all hooked up, mm -hmm. and she came back in the room, and she said, have you ever had a heart attack? And I said, no. I mean, I laughed at her. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, not a funny joke, but, um, and she says, well, not only does it look like you've had a heart attack, you have the heart of a 60-year-old man who has had several heart attacks. A 60-year-old man? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, and I've heard that before, that people will have a heart attack, but they don't even know that they're having one or mm -hmm. that they've had one. Mm -hmm. So then what happened? Well, and of course, they can't confirm that you have it, but I had all the um, symptoms, I had all the chest pain, and I obviously have the EKG of it. So um, from there, I really needed to do my own research. That's um, where I looked to American Heart. I looked on their website. They were super helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I. Um, enlisted a few doctors and then I found a doctor that I really enjoyed going to and she really helped me just break it down what was it what do I need to do next and help monitor it so when when were you diagnosed how, how long ago about six years ago six years ago mm -hmm. and now does this run in your family well they say it's hereditary so then immediately I get my mom my dad okay we need to figure this out where is this coming from they couldn't pinpoint it there so it's coming from somewhere else so and they're fine yes Okay, so good news. how are you preventing this happening again? Well, what I really need to do is maintain a particular heart rate. Obviously, I need to eat healthy. I need to exercise smart. It's not just about going out there and, you know, beating it up on the treadmill. It's about being smart about your exercise. And um, I need to stay in a certain range and really monitor what I'm doing. This, uh, when you're talking about the different activities, now, are you running? Are you lifting weights? What are they saying for a person of your age to do? Well, I can do all kinds of things, but really um, I do light with lifting because that particularly, I can't do heavy lifting that would um, damage and go further with my heart, particular heart situation. So um, I just keep a steady, constant exercise. I just can't let that go. So I need to keep that healthy. Doctor, thank you very mm -hmm. much for sharing that. How how can we get word out there to tell people that they need to get their hearts checked? You no, know, this is this is also known as the silent killer, correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What yeah, in fact, statistically, 25% of people, their first sign of heart disease is sudden death. 25% of people die of their first heart attack. So it's absolutely critical that we get the word out. And we've done a very good job of getting the word out for men. We've done a very poor job for women. And as you said, it kills you know, more women than all types of cancers combined. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, more women die every year from heart cardiovascular disease than men. See, and that amazes me because hearing of a heart attack, you, 
don't want to say always hear, but it seems like, oh, well, this man died of a heart mm -hmm. attack. You rarely hear that this woman died of a heart attack. And I think because, it, does it affect us differently, like the hot flashes and, and we're hearing a story of um, where you get uh, sick to your stomach? That is absolutely critical. The symptoms are completely different. How do they compare? In, in men, you'll hear the typical symptoms are the crush and chest pain, go into the jaw, go into the arm. A lot of times, women don't get that typical type of symptoms. Um, sometimes they'll get funny symptoms that may feel like reflux disease or just f funny pains across the chest. Some women don't get any chest pain at all. Some women will just get shortness of breath. Others will just get fatigue. They'll say they're just tired. Something just doesn't feel right. And unless that's investigated through testing, um, we never know. Mm -hmm. And which unfortunately leads to worse outcomes later on. I think too, with the society that we live in and the fact that women are going back into the workplace and that here we are in a recession and there's, it just seems like everyone is so stressed out. Has this always been the case for women or is this just now that the statistics are coming that women are, are sufferers of heart disease. This has always been the case and the word just hasn't gotten out there. Um, for example, a lot of the cancers like breast cancer, they do a very good job of publicizing it. Mm -hmm. And now what we're trying to do is the same thing with heart disease. And that's what Go Red for Women is all about. It's mm -hmm. just about getting the word out, it's importance that it's there. And again, the thing I can't stress enough, it's very preventable, it's very treatable. So if we detect it at a very early stage, we can prevent that heart attack down the road. We can prevent that stroke down the road. There's a lot we can offer to, to patients these days, but women have to get screened. That's the key part. Okay, and that's what we want to reinforce home this Friday by everybody wearing the red pins. Um, and if you see the logo somewhere, shop at that place and mm -hmm. have the proceeds go to the Go for Red or Go Red for Women. The other thing too is I've always heard aspirin. Like if you feel signs of, of heart pressure, take an aspirin. Is that is that true? And exa when when exactly do you do something like that? Yeah, people at risk um, should be in a, on aspirin. That's something everybody should talk to their doctor about if it's a benefit for them. Um, another thing I need to stress, though, is if anybody's having any type of symptom of a heart attack, if they think they're having chest pains, um, they need to call 911. They need to get to the emergency room quickly. Mm -hmm. The same thing with a stroke. If you feel like you're having symptoms of a stroke, um, weakness in your arm and your legs, you're not talking right, you need to get to the emergency room immediately because we have a lot of life-saving um, ability now um, to prevent damage both to the heart and the stroke. But the key is you got to get there quickly. Mm -hmm. If you don't get there right away, a lot of times the damage can become permanent. And when you're talking chest pains, I've heard people describe it as an elephant standing on their chest. I mean, is that how strong of a chest pain you're, you are probably feeling? Um, again, that's a typical for men. For women, it's not always like that. I mean, I've heard all types. I've had women who've sworn to me up and down that their pain was reflux pain, reflux. and it ended up being heart Heartburn. disease. Yeah. So if there is any suspicion whatsoever, I always tell people it doesn't hurt to go down to the emergency room, get an EKG, EKG. just get screened, get looked at. Yeah. Um, if it's not a problem, you know, you've wasted a few hours. But if it is a problem, you get fixed up right away. And again, the key is if you get there early, damage can be prevented. Exactly. And that's hence here's and Trisha's with us today because of that. Absolutely. So thank you very much, Trisha and Doctor, for joining us. We appreciate it. And don't thank forget you. this Friday, the big campaign, Go Red for Women and support this cause and spread the awareness. When we return, the latest group scoop on all the little antics of Charlie Sheen. Stay with us. <laughs>